Chin Han. Welcome to the 2022 Fall Back Concert. Remember, set your clocks back one hour when you go to bed tonight. But I'll tell you about that again later. Right now, sit back and get ready to listen to some fine band music. We began the program with John Philip Sousa's The Gallant Seventh. This march was written for the 7th Regiment, 107th Infantry of the New York National Guard and the conductor of that famous regiment's band, Major Francis Sutherland. Sutherland was a coronetist in Sousa's band, but left that organization to enlist in the Army after the United States entered the First World War. He became leader of the 27th Division, the 10th Field Artillery Band, during the conflict. He returned to the 7th Regiment after the war, and his band members joined with the members of Sousa's band to premiere the Gallant 7th March at the New York Hippodrome on November 5, 1922, 100 years ago to the day of our performance this evening. Written during the last decade of his career, this march is considered one of Sousa's best. This march calls for the regimental trumpets and drums. Steve Erhoven represented the drum section and Ken Walker the trumpets in highlighting the regimental parts of your oral and visual pleasure for this evening. Thank you. song of Philip Bliss is a radical departure of style of David Halsinger. The frantic tempos, the ebullient rhythms we associate with him are replaced with restful, gentle, and reflective composition based on the 1876 Philip Bliss Horatio Spafford hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. Written to honor the retiring principal of Shady Grove Christian Academy, Anaheim's song of Philip Bliss was presented as a gift from the SGCA band concert to Reverend Steve Adele in May of 1989. Horatio Spafford, a Chicago Presbyterian layman and successful businessman, planned a European trip for his family in 1873. In November of that year, due to unexpected last minute business developments, he had to remain in Chicago but he sent his wife and four daughters on ahead as scheduled aboard the SS Ville du Havre. He expected to follow in a few days. On November 22nd, the ship was struck by the Lokern, an English vessel, and sank in 12 minutes. Several days later, the survivors were finally landed in Cardiff, Wales, and Mrs. Spafford cabled her husband, quote, saved alone. Shortly afterward, Spafford left by ship to join his bereaved wife. It is speculated that on the sea near the area where it was thought his four daughters had drowned, Spafford penned this text, the words so significantly describing his own grief, when sorrows like sea billows roll, it is well with my soul. It is noteworthy, however, that Spafford does not dwell on the theme of life's sorrows and trials, but focuses attention on the third stanza of the redemptive work of Christ. Humanly speaking, it is amazing that one could experience such personal tragedy and sorrow as he did and still be able to say with such convincing clarity, it is well with my soul. Hymn writer Philip Bliss was so impressed with the experience and expression of Spafford's text that he shortly wrote the music for it, first published in 1876. Bliss was a prolific writer of gospel songs throughout his brief lifetime, and in most cases, he wrote both the words and the music. The hymn is one of the few exceptions. There is speculation that this was perhaps the last gospel song written by Bliss. Bliss and his wife, Lucy, were killed in a train wreck in Ashtabula, Ohio, on December 29, 1876. Most sources mention that Bliss actually escaped the flames, but was then killed when he went back into the train to try and rescue his wife. 
neither body was ever found. As a postscript, Bliss's trunk was salvaged from the wreckage, and in it, Evangelist D.W. Whittle found an unfinished hymn which began, I know not what awaits me, God, kindly veils my eyes. We hope you enjoy the Oshkosh Area Community Band's performance of On Hymn Song of Philip Bliss, conducted by our Associate Director, Mr. John Bastian.
was on a hymn song of Philip Bliss. I have to get my pages back in order. <clears throat> Chorale and Alleluia was completed in January 1954 and was Dr. Hansen's first work for symphonic band. The composition opens with a fine flowing chorale. And soon the joyous Alleluia theme appears and is much in evidence throughout. A bold statement of a new melody makes its appearance in the horns and baritones in combination with the above themes. The effect is one of religious exaltation, solemnity, and dignity. The music is impressive and straightforward. This is Howard Hansen's Chorale and Alleluia.
angels singing hallelujah? <laughs> Band of Brothers is an American war drama miniseries based on historian Stephen E. Ambrose's 1992 nonfiction book of the same name. The episodes first aired in 2001 on HBO. The series won Emmy and Golden Globe Awards in 2001 for the best miniseries. This heroic and haunting music was composed by well-known film composer Michael Kamen. It is a sweeping, diverse score that encompasses lovely soaring ballads as well as driving intense flashes of sound. It was scored for band by Jerry Brubecker. Here is Symphonic Suite from Band of Brothers.
Sweet from Band of Brothers. I have too much paper to make. <laughs> to get you ready for the jazz ensemble, the band is going to shift gears to an arrangement of Michael Bublé, Haven't Met You Yet. It was released on August 31st, 2009. It is a song about everyone's dream of finding a relationship and love. Buble co-wrote Haven't Met You Yet with Alan Chang and Amy Foster Gillis and dedicated it to his wife. She appears in the music video. The song has won many awards. So sit and relax to Haven't Met You Yet. opportunity for members to perform music outside of the concert band literature. The ensemble will explore the many facets of jazz literature, especially the defining attribute of improvisation. Improvisation. I can't read either. The band rehearses after the concert band on Monday evenings and affords musicians opportunities to play a second instrument. Recorded by Stevie Wonder in 1976 on his acclaimed album, Songs in the Key of Life, this beautiful song is a good example of combining elements of jazz with pop. The lyrics celebrate the birth of his daughter, Aisha Morris, Wonder, collaborated on the song with Harlem songwriter and studio owner, Bernetta Funny Jones. Keeping the same easy flowing shuffle groove of the original, Mike Tomero adapts this very nicely for the contemporary full jazz ensemble. Soloists for tonight's performance are Doug Mace on trumpet and Marshall Potter on piano. Here is Isn't She Lovely? <laughs>
We got a lot of sax players up here. That's probably why I married one. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> the Sound of Music is a musical with music by Richard Rogers and lyrics by Oscar Hammerstein II, and a book by Howard Lindsay and Russell Krauss. It is based on the 1949 memoir of Maria von Trapp, the story of the Trapp family singers. Set in Austria on the eve of the Anschluss in 1938, the musical tells the story of Maria, who takes a job as governess to a large family while she decides whether to become a nun. She falls in love with the children and eventually with their widowed father, Captain von Trapp. He is ordered to accept a commission in the German Navy, but he opposes the Nazis. He and Maria decide on a plan to flee Austria with the children. Many songs from the musical have become standards, including Idleweiss, Climb Every Mountain, Do Re Mi, The Sound of Music, and our next selection, My Favorite Things, arranged by Paul Murtha. Treated here as a jazz waltz, this popular tune features a relaxed and easy flowing swing style. The melody is passed on from section to section, and there are short solos for Roger Becker on tenor sax, Bob Hopkins on alto sax, Doug Mace on trumpet, and Lucas Collard on tenor sax. Here is my favorite things.
New York State of Mind is a song written by Billy Joel that initially appeared on the album Turnstiles in 1976. Although it was never released as a single, it has become a fan favorite and a song that Joel plays regularly in concert. Joel wrote the song after returning to the East Coast from Los Angeles, where he had spent the previous three years. In fact, most of Saturn's styles deals with Joel's cross-country relocation, including Say Goodbye to Hollywood, I've Loved These Days, Summer, Highland Falls, and Miami 2017, Seeing the Lights Go Out on Broadway. The inspiration for the song came from his pride in returning home to New York. Joel was liter literally taking a Greyhound bus on the Hudson River Line route when the idea for the song came to him, and the song was written as soon as Joel arrived home. This bluesy treatment of Billy Joel's classic hit by Sammy Nestico features a small group on the verse and later a swing and full ensemble chorus and Lucas Collard on tenor sax. Here is New York State of Mind.
mind. The Tiger of San Pedro is a jazz song by John Labero, made popular by trombonist Bill Waters. It was the title song of the Grammy-nominated Columbia recording Tiger of San Pedro by Waters' band, the Manhattan Wildlife Refuge. The title is based on a character in one of the 56 short stories featuring Sherlock Holmes. Don Juan Murillo is a deposed dictator from Central America, formerly known as the Tiger of San Pedro, living in England in the story of The Adventure of Wisteria Lodge. Arranged by Paul Lavender, the Oshkosh Area Community Jazz Ensemble will finish our portion of the concert with The Tiger of San Pedro, featuring solos by Roger Becker on tenor sax, Doug Mace on trumpet, and a percussion break led by Mark Cable. Here is The Tiger of San Pedro.
with bald head noise. <laughs> You have just heard the short version of Celebration Fanfare, which was gifted to the community band by composer Warren Barker as he completed his commission of Irving Berlin in the early years for the band's 10th anniversary. What a unique and tremendous gift. Thank you. We are going to finish up our tribute and celebration of our founding music director, Terry Hathaway. We had a concert all set to perform and we were about 10 days away from performance when the world turned upside down with COVID-19. We are about back to full strength instrumentation wise, so we are ready to pick up where we left off. One man was a natural to invite to guest conduct this evening. He started our honoree, Terry Hathaway, on his instrument, as well as the current conductor, Dave Burnt, as well as several others who are on stage or who have played with the community band. And I'm gonna turn this over to Amy. Hi, I'm gonna take you back in time for a few moments. It's November 12th, 1986. It's Terry Hathaway's 40th birthday. Our children and myself were planning a surprise birthday party for him. So at about 6 o'clock, I asked him if he would run me over to Kmart just to get him out of the house so the kids could get everything ready to go and the people would come in. Well, when it was about time to head out, we went to the checkout. We were heading out through the parking lot, and this car pulls up beside us. Window opens, and someone says, Terry. And we turned around, and it was Roger Lowe. He told us that a bunch of his music, other music teachers had been talking and were deciding they wanted to put together an adult community band and they thought Terry would be the best person to direct it. As you can see, this is the beautiful birthday present that Terry got and that has given the community all of these years. So thank you, Roger, for Terry's best birthday present ever. Days of Glory by John Cockabus was inspired by the great slow marches of England. Although the work is an original composition, its themes are similar to early folk marching songs. It is played often by school bands near and far during the 60s when it was written, and it is still in print today, 60 years later. Please welcome to our stage, Mr. Roger Long.
days of glory. Thank you, Roger. And now it's time to welcome Terry Hathaway to the podium. He will conduct and narrate. First conduct, Fantasy on Yankee Doodle is a free treatment of one of America's most famous early songs. It was commissioned by the Bethlehem Central School District Band Festival in Del Mar, New York and premiered on March 6, 1995 with the composer Mark Williams conducting. It is in one movement, and it opens with a vigorous fanfare which leads into the statement of the theme by the tubas. This is followed by a dark, moody variant. A spirited allegro brightens the mood. Listen for some rocky seven, eight meter that will give way to a lyrical episode. A Latin percussion vamp eventually leads into a full statement of the theme. The final Maestoso fanfare leads us work to a satisfying and exciting conclusion. Here is Fantasy on Yankee Doodle by Mark Williams and our director, Terry Hathaway.
different Yankee Doodle Dandy. You can next see this band in the downtown Oshkosh Holiday Parade, which occurs on Thursday, December 1st, kicking off at 6.15 p.m. by the Sundial in Oshkosh. Our annual Christmas sing will be happening again this year at the Grand. Madrigal groups from the local high schools will sing and the band will be playing. This event will happen on Sunday, December 11th, it's earlier this year, 7 p.m. at the Grand. It is free to attend, but we're taking a collection for the Salvation Army. So, be generous, please. Plan to join us for our next concert, which will be here at Alberta Kimball Auditorium on Saturday, March 18th. You're not going to remember all those dates. I can just tell. For those of you who are on our email list, you will get a reminder. If you're not, sign up at the doors before you go home tonight. We don't give out your information. It's just for us. We'll get a reminder. <coughs> We need to thank our fill-in stage manager tonight, Tom. You saw him running around trying to fix the microphone. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. All of our friends who usher, people who greet you at the door, our sponsors who pay our bills, and especially you, our audience, so we have someone to play for. Are you talking now or later? No? Okay. The Peckhorn's Revenge by Richard William Bowles tells the tale of a peckhorn player. What's a peckhorn player, you might ask? Terry will explain it as he narrates. Oh, how do you read anything up there is no light? deviate from the prescribed and written out stuff here to tell you a little bit about this. and some fiction. I will let you decide which is which. And so, this is my story. You never heard of a peck horn? Well, let me show you what I mean. Just listen. Sounds good, doesn't it? But now 
let's break that down into sections and see what the individual band members are playing. First, the brass and percussion. This then is my story, what I call a tragedy in afterbeats. <laughs> I always liked playing band music, and just as soon as I got up enough courage just after Thanksgiving, I went to see Mr. Roger Laut to sign up for beginning band. I just couldn't wait to take part in the beautiful music. Mr. Laut told me I could join right after Christmas vacation. When I got home, I told my parents, and they were enthusiastic too. That's when they gave me my grandfather's E-flat mellophone, and I finally got to play in the beginning band. sixth grade beginning band, I looked forward to fall when I would get into the junior high band and play some real music. I practiced every day and worked with Mr. Lauk. That fall I got into the seventh grade junior high band and Mr. Lauk gave me a single B-flat French horn to play. three long years of playing after beats in the junior high band. My patient was tempered a bit by Mr. Locke's assurance that when I got to the high school, where the real symphonic music was, my beautiful French horn would really come into its own. Tenth grade, finally, the senior high school concert band. I'll never forget that first rehearsal. As I scanned the, through the first number, my spirit soared. There, right in the middle of the page, it said in big letters, soul. A solo at last. My long years of study and practice were going to be rewarded. At last I was going to have a solo. As we started the piece, my heart was filled with pride and anticipation of the solo to come. Afterbeats. I thought to myself, they can't do this to me. I'll organize a resistance movement among all of the horn players and we'll revolt. We'll infiltrate into all of the music offices and organizations. We'll boycott playing marches. If necessary, we'll take over all the area radio stations and make them play polka music 24-7. <laughs> we will finally dominate the entire music scene of Oshkosh. <laughs> and then came our revenge. No more afterbeats. Here, I'll show you what I mean. Thank <laughs> you. 
friends of Terry and Amy. We always laugh about the French horn and the sax player. Bob got a birthday card one year with two little hamsters on it. One was playing a French horn and one was playing a saxophone. <laughs> it was really cute. I saved it. I even put it in a picture frame. Hung it on the wall. It's still there. But you ever notice when the music changes in the movie, it's always the French horns that make a change. That's pretty cool. Uh-oh, French horns are playing. Something's going to happen. I can just tell. Tom, Tom, this is whistling. the tribute section of our program, which will close the show. We are here to pay tribute to our founding conductor, Terry Hathaway, but before we do that, there's somebody else who helped build the band behind the scenes. This person is every bit as vital to the sex of our modest little ensemble as her more illustrious partner. For a while, the Oshkosh Area Community Band is about music and music should be for life. There is a real need to mind the business in order to have music. We need sheet music to play, a place to hold concerts. That costs money and a way to pay the bills. Amy was the business manager, you see, and to honor all of her many accomplishments for the band, we invite Amy to come forward right now. And the band's going to play for Amy.
The Oshkosh Area Community Band was organized in January of 1987 under the co-sponsorship of the Oshkosh North, uh, the Oshkosh Noon Kiwanis Club and the Oshkosh Recreation Department. At one of the very first meetings that eventually led to the establishment of the band, it was noted that a major key to the success of such a venture would be a dynamic and enthusiastic director. Well, Terry filled that role, but he had help. And you can't do this by yourself. And one of his, for all the countless details, large and small, that go into making an organization like ours work, takes the right persons. And Terry had Amy, who helped in innumerable ways and put in much time to help the band develop into what it has become. And she's pretty much behind the scenes all this time. And um, uh, there, uh, from assuming the, the mantle when Terry left is, I realized more and more how many things there were to get done. And, and uh, Terry and Amy always made it happen. So we have a little uh, gift to present to Amy. So thank you. It's like, Amy, thank you for being an angel for our group and for all the, all the many things you've done. So thank you. Thank you. If you want to say a couple, I just want to thank them for all the help they gave me. Okay. I'm back. In case you didn't know, that song was "Once in Love with Amy." Now the moment that we've all been waiting for, and we've been pointing toward this for a while, and it turns out a couple of years. It intended to take place on March 21st, 2020, now two years and 229 days later, we will play the piece we commissioned to honor Terry Hathaway. And I'm reading this from the program notes published on the score. Written as a celebratory piece, above and beyond, explodes with energy and enthusiasm, a tribute to the quest for the extraordinary, the desire to do more than is required. This composition is based on three themes, the opening melody representing hope and joy, first stated in the brass, the second theme depicting spirit and persistence, stated by the woodwinds, and the cantable theme symbolizing heart and compassion. These three themes ebb and flow and develop organically until ultimately the second and third themes are played in tandem. The music then returns to the first theme and builds to a final flourish. Above and Beyond was commissioned by the Oshkosh Area Community Band in honor of Terry Hathaway upon his retirement as the founding director. Terry embodies everything this piece stands for. This is a repeat performance for us from last spring. Terry, you always went above and beyond. So with many thanks and much affection, we dedicate this performance to you.
Terry, 30 years of plus years of bringing the band from a wish of a few founders to what you see and hear before you this evening. Our best way to pay tribute to what you and Amy have started is to keep it going for 30 more years, or as long as the good Lord sees fit to allow to keep us playing. For music should be for life, and you've helped lead the way uh, with this, and this group is a testimony to your hard work and good leadership. You This is a great group who gather together to make music because it is fun and because it is soul satisfying. The published program notes for Above and Beyond put it nicely. The music represents hope and joy, spirit and persistence, heart and compassion. Terry embodies everything this piece stands for. So we present to you, our friend, a framed first page of the score for Above and Beyond, signed by the composer, which reads, Bravo to the Maestro, Robert Buckley. Mel says to me, yeah, your favorite, <laughs> liking to talk. Um, I have to tell you, the, the 32 years that I, I did it really was a joy. And the easiest way I can explain it, there were Mondays where after a long day at school, I was really tired, and I thought, boy, am I going to make it through rehearsal tonight? And I'd come in within four or five minutes, and they would generate so much energy for me that it just made it a blessing and a joy to work with them all the time. It was always fun and funny, <laughs> and uh, they always did their best to, to do what I was demanding of them, and, uh, and that just, again, just made it a joy to uh, group to work with. Um, you can't finish um, what seems like finishing a job, so finishing maybe as the director of the group, um, and still be as excited and love it as much as you did when you started. There's a lot of people that can't say that about their, if you want to call it a job, that they enjoyed it that much at the end as they did at the beginning, and I do. Thank you. concert to greet our honorees this evening. Roger Lulk, Amy and Terry Hathaway will receive well-wishers down in front and center in the auditorium at the conclusion of tonight's performance. And to conclude our concert this evening, we invite Terry to conduct the band for our final number, which is titled What Terry Will Always Be For Us, Our Director.
quick night as they ride home and don't forget to turn their clocks back or you'll be late for church.